This is chapter seven, chemical reactions and quantities. We're starting section two, types of chemical reactions. There are a lot of different ways that we can categorize chemical reactions based on how they proceed, the mechanism that they follow and things like that. But broadly speaking, all chemical reactions can really be broken down into five fundamental types. Uh, these types are the combination reaction, sometimes called the formation or synthesis reaction, a decomposition reaction, a single replacement reaction, a double replacement reaction, or a combustion reaction. So we're going to look at each of these five different types of chemical reactions. The first kind is the combination reaction. This, again, is also called the formation reaction or the synthesis reaction because it involves the creation of a single product from two or more reactants. Okay, So you have two things that are reacting with one another, and they combine together to produce or form a single product. Okay, In this case, you have A and B, and they combine together to form AB. Okay? These are just uh, arbitrary placeholders. They're not real elements. Uh, as far as real elements go, here are some examples. You can take magnesium metal and combine it with oxygen from the air and they'll sort of burn together and create magnesium oxide. You can take sodium metal and combine it with chlorine gas and if you react those together they can form sodium chloride or table salt. Or, so in those cases you can have two individual elements that combine together to form a compound. But you can also have two different compounds come together to form a more complex compound. So you can have in this last case sulfur trioxide combined with water to form what is actually sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Okay. So all of these take two reactants and leave a single product. Right? So they're combination reactions. This is the example of the combination of magnesium and oxygen. Okay? Magnesium is a metal, right? so you can see a strip of this uh, silvery magnesium metal here. Uh, and oxygen is obviously present in the atmosphere typically. So if you provide this some heat energy, what will happen is the oxygen molecules in the atmosphere will begin to react with the magnesium atoms in the metal and work their way into the structure. Give them enough energy, then it'll disrupt the magnesium crystal structure and the oxygen atoms will become ions. There'll be a transfer of ions and they'll start to work their way in and form this regular alternating structure of magnesium and oxygen ions, which is known as magnesium oxide. Okay? So two things become one, that's a combination. The reverse of the combination reaction is a decomposition reaction. Okay? In a decomposition reaction, one substance, okay, in this case the compound AB, splits apart into two or more simpler substances. So in this case AB splits apart into A and B, where these are just two different either compounds or elements. Right? So again, you can have a compound such as mercury oxide split apart into its elements, mercury and oxygen, or you can have a more complex compound split apart into a compound and an element, or a compound and another compound. Okay? But in each case, you have one reactant, and it breaks down or splits apart into two or more products. This is the example of mercury oxide. If you heat it up or run an electrical current through it, you can provide enough energy for the mercury oxide structure to break apart, and the mercury atoms or ions to come back together and the oxygen ions or atoms to come back together uh, and form liquid mercury and oxygen gas. And the oxygen gas will form bubbles and escape into the atmosphere. The next type is a little bit uh, trickier. It's a single replacement reaction. Here you have one element and one compound reacting together. And what happens is the element will take the place of one of the elements in the compound. So in this case, you have A is the element and BC is the compound. And what happens is A sort of kicks out the B from the compound. And so A ends up partnered with C and the B, which has been kicked out, is now by itself. Okay? So the A replaces B in the compound with C. Okay? And so we call it a single replacement because there's just one replacement happening. Okay? Uh, a good example of this is zinc uh, dissolving in hydrochloric acid. Uh, so you have a zinc atom, which will combine with the chloride ions that come from the hydrochloric acid, and the hydrogen from the hydrochloric acid will escape, and they'll actually pair up and form hydrogen gas. Okay. You can have a similar reaction with iron and copper sulfate. Iron will replace the copper, and you'll end up with iron sulfate, and then the copper will be left alone. 
Okay, so on the one side you have iron by itself, on the other side you have copper by itself. Okay, so this is a single replacement reaction. Here's the example of zinc chloride dissolving in hydrochloric acid. Okay, and a lot of these single replacement reactions tend to involve ionic compounds, although not always. We can still talk about them in terms of covalent compounds, but frequently they'll involve a metal and an ionic compound, and the metal is going to replace the metal that's already present in the ionic compound. Okay, in this case, it's not quite ionic. It's HCl, and H is not quite a metal, so it's not quite an ionic compound, but it shares some similar properties. Uh, and so a similar reaction happens. A double replacement reaction is the next step. Here you have two compounds and essentially they trade partners. Okay, So typically this will be two ionic compounds, although again, not always, uh, but typically it's two ionic compounds and what happens is the positive ion from one compound will leave its negative ion and it'll uh, join with the negative ion from the other compound. Uh, so for a formula for an ionic compound, we always write the positive one first and the negative second, right? So the positive one first and the negative one second. So that means that A is positive and C is positive. B is negative and D is negative. So if A dissociates from B, well, it could meet up with the C ion, presumably, but since they're both positive, they wouldn't really come into contact. They would repel one another. Uh, but if A comes into contact with D, it'll begin to stick together again. Right? The positive from A will stick to the negative from D. So if the attraction between A and D is more than the attraction between A and B, well then A will end up going along with D. Right? And vice versa, C plus, C, which is a positive ion, will be left with the negative B ion. Right? So this is a double replacement. Each uh, element in a compound is replaced by another. Okay? Or in a sense, they sort of switch partners. Okay. And again, this is a lot of uh, reactions between ionic compounds. These are called double replacement. Sometimes they're called precipitation reactions because often you have the formation of a solid. Right In this first case, it's silver chloride is a solid uh, which is formed. So the, the attraction between silver and chlorine is pretty strong. Uh, so silver will leave the nitrate ion that it's originally with and join with the chloride. And when they join together, they form a solid and then they precipitate out of solution as sort of a, a cloudy substance. Okay. Uh, and then you have another one, zinc sulfide and HCl, again, hydrochloric acid. Uh, and again, here, the in this case, it's the formation of the hydrogen sulfide gas, which is driving the reaction. So the hydrogen leaves the chloride ion and joins up with the sulfur ion and forms hydrogen sulfide. And then the zinc and the chloride ions are then sort of left behind in solution. They can come together and form zinc chloride. This is barium sulfate, the precipitation reaction of forming barium sulfate. So you start with sodium sulfate okay, in water. So the AQ here means it's dissolved in water. And barium chloride, also dissolved in water. We'll see a little bit more specifically what that means later. Um, but basically, they're, they're dissolved in water. All the ions dissociate. And then when a barium from the barium chloride meets up with the sulfate from the sodium sulfate, they form barium sulfate, which you can see has a solid, an S next to it, because it turns into the solid phase. So instead of being dissolved, it turns into a solid and then precipitates out. Uh, it looks like this cloudy substance is formed from two clear liquids. And as you let it settle, it'll just sort of settle to the bottom as a solid. Okay? The sodium and chloride ions are then again left behind and they're still dissolved in the water, but the barium sulfate has formed a solid. The last type of reaction is sort of a special type. This is a combustion reaction. Combustion is when you have a carbon containing compound uh, which burns in the presence of oxygen. Okay? So we already saw a reaction that was similar to this in the magnesium uh, reacting with oxygen in a combination. Um, but in that case, it's not technically combustion because magnesium is not a carbon containing compound. So it's similar. Um, it ha also has uh, similar properties in that it forms light and heat. Um, but it's a different kind of reaction. Here we're talking about carbon compounds burning in the presence of oxygen or reacting with oxygen. And if you have a compound that is only carbon and hydrogen, then the products that you're going to get are CO2, carbon dioxide, and water, H2O. Okay? And of course, another very apparent product of this reaction is a lot of heat and light 
given off energy released from this reaction okay so combustion this is a, an example of combustion ch4 is methane gas so it might be like the the natural gas that can heat some people's houses uh, combines with oxygen gas and it produces co2 and h2o okay so when you cleanly burn a carbon containing compound without forming any other side products or anything the only products are co2 and h2o okay so any soot or tar or smoke or anything like that that you see that comes out of a combustion reaction is actually a side reaction either the fuel has things other than carbon and hydrogen in it, it has other impurities in it uh, or the oxygen is burning and reacting with other things around in the environment so either way the the real products of a combustion reaction are just co2 and h2o this chart just summarizes the reaction types over here you have the generic formula or equation in terms of the uh, sort of generic a and b uh, idea here the only one where that's changed a little bit is for combustion because combustion specifically involves oxygen uh, used up and co2 and h2o created and so they give you some information here about how you can balance this equation but we'll see more about that later on and then on this side you have examples of each type of reaction so it's important to be able to identify uh, the reaction type so for this first one you have two aluminum reacting with three sulfuric acid to produce aluminum sulfate and hydrogen gas okay so you have an element aluminum and a compound sulfuric acid and the aluminum is going to replace the hydrogen uh, in bonding to the sulfate and you're going to end up with aluminum sulfate and then the hydrogen which was with the sulfate ends up all on its own over here so what this is is a single replacement reaction Okay, so single replacement I'm going to say SR this next one is two compounds in fact two ionic compounds you have sodium sulfate and silver nitrate okay sodium is positive sulfate is negative silver is positive nitrate is negative so if the sodium leaves the sulfate the only other ion that it can really attach to is the nitrate and so you're going to end up with sodium nitrate okay uh, the silver leaves the nitrate the only other negative ion for it to bond to is the sulfate and so you end up with silver sulfate okay so if you look at the positive and negative charges in the ionic compounds you should never be uh, confused about what the products are you can tell because the positives always leave the negative ion that they're with and go to the only other negative ion in the equation okay and this is of course a double replacement okay two replacements are made uh, this next one is very simple you have nitrogen and you have oxygen and they combine together to form nitrogen monoxide so this is combination okay if you uh, abbreviate combination make sure you don't just abbreviate it as comb because that can be confused as combustion right so at least write like combine or something like that right just write out the full word in most cases is a better idea uh, because the last example is a case where you have combustion okay it is a carbon containing compound plus some amount of oxygen and it creates co2 and h2o and also energy now you might not always see energy they might not always write energy as a product of the reaction so look for the co i'm sorry the o2 on the left and co2 and h2o on the right and that is a combustion reaction and again be careful about abbreviating that so it's not confused with combination okay so there are other reactions by the way that will use oxygen or produce co2 or produce h2o they're not necessarily combustion all three have to be present okay in fact all four you need a high a carbon fuel source and typically it'll be carbon and hydrogen uh, and then you also need oxygen and you have to produce co2 and h2o without all four of those components um, this is not a combustion reaction okay and this one has them so it is a combustion reaction let's try some more examples uh, so here you have three barium ions and a nitrogen molecule and they react to form barium nitride okay two elements react to form one com uh, compound product and so this is combination the next one we have two silver plus hydrogen sulfide and that produces silver sulfide and hydrogen gas and so what's happening is originally right you have an element and a compound and in the compound the sulfur is originally with hydrogen but afterwards it's with silver 
Okay, so the hydrogen has been replaced by silver and the hydrogen is now on its own. So this is a single replacement. Okay. Uh, C is pretty clear. It's a carbon hydrogen compound plus oxygen. It gives you carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So this is combustion. Okay. Again, it has to have all those four parts. The energy sometimes is left off, but it has to have the other four material components. Uh, the next one is one ionic compound reacting with another ionic compound to produce two different ionic compounds. So what happens is the lead from PBCl2 leaves the chloride, right? Lead's positive, chloride's negative, so it leaves the negative chloride, and it finds the only other negative ion, which is the sulfate. So lead and sulfate combine together, okay? In this case, lead and sulfate combine together, and they form a solid, which is not really soluble in water. So while everything else is dissolved in water, the lead sulfate forms a solid and settles to the bottom or comes out of solution as sort of a cloudiness and then settles to the bottom. Right? Uh, meanwhile, the chloride joins up with the potassium and produces potassium chloride. So this is a double replacement. Okay? Both of them are being replaced. There's two replacements occurring. And then last but not least, you have potassium carbonate and this is reacting by itself to form potassium oxide and carbon dioxide, okay? So this is one compound breaking down into two substances, okay? In this case, they're both compounds, but they're still simpler compounds than you started with. So it's one thing uh, reacting and becoming two things. This is decomposition, 